Hey, it's Gary Alicio. Um, after the video of the Tika T1X barrel removal, I had a few guys ask me about barrel installation videos. And, um, you know, it's pretty straightforward. I think if you saw the removal video, you have a pretty good idea of what's going on as far as reinstallation. Um, I'm, I did install one of our barrels, one of our T1X setback barrels. I wanted to show you these. Um, the Tika barrels are actually quite good. Uh, as far as the rifling goes and the condition of the bores and everything, they're actually very nice. The uh, two issues I have with them is, uh, one is generally speaking the uh, transition from the uh, chamber to the rifling is pretty ugly in some of these barrels. I think if you've ever looked at one of the bore scope, you'd see what I'm talking about. But the other issue that I think is more important um, is that the chambers on the, T, on the T1Xs are very long. They're deep, so, so that the bullets will not engrave. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here's a, a Lapus NRX, and this is just a takeoff barrel, unfired. And you can see it goes all the way in. That, that, cart, that cartridge goes all the way in. And here's a Ely Match, same deal, goes all the way in. So uh, Match, Rifles, rimfire match rifles, typically they're designed for optimal accuracy, is you want the bullet, the first couple drive bands, to engrave in the rifling. So after we, we set these back about an eighth of an inch, you can see right there kind of where how far we set them back, and then I rechamber them with a match reamer. So here's an Ely match cartridge. You can see right there it stops, and... Uh, that's engraving probably around 50 thou. And uh, same here with the Lapua Center X. You can see it too does not go all the way in. It stops short of going in all the way. It too engraves about 50, I think this one engraves about 45 thousandths. In any case, uh, the result is that rifles generally shoot quite a bit better for that. And it really does make the most of the uh, already pretty good barrel that the Tika's come with. Now, as far as the install goes, um, just a couple things I want to go over is this shoulder here does not go, does not bottom out in the receiver. It actually stops short of bottoming out. And if you did bottom it out, you wouldn't be able to close the bolt. The bolt wouldn't close. Um, so what I do is I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I typically use a two thousandths shim when I'm installing the barrel between the bolt face, this top or the, the top part of the bolt right here, the furthest forward part of the bolt right in there, and the breech end of the barrel right here. So there's basically a two thousandths clearance between the bolt and the uh, barrel when it's assembled up. And, and that seems to work really well. Um, the other thing that I do is when it comes to tightening these screws down, I typically will tighten the first two screws. I do put a little Loctite in there and I'll tighten the first two screws at about 40 inch pounds. The third screw I don't tighten very tight at all. I just bring it down into contact and just lightly tighten it because that screws over the chamber and I really don't see any need for that to be tight. In fact, I don't want it tight on the chamber. So, uh, these two screws do the, uh, the work of holding it in place with along with the Loctite. One other thing we do is when I'm when I set these back I actually cut a little flat when I'm doing the uh, extractor groove at the same time I'll hit this I'll put a little flat here and that gives the cut points on the set screws a nice flat surface to bear on which um, is a lot more secure than just binding them down on the r radius like the uh, like they come from the factory, uh, where they typically will just bite down in t at two points. So uh, that kind of helps sort of give the screws more purchase and more gripping power without them having to be quite so tight. Anyway, uh, I hope this answers your questions. I appreciate you watching. Thanks.